I'm going to show you how to generate objects in Blender by randomly assembling handcrafted segments. I'll be making these swords, but this process will work for anything that can be reasonably cut into segments. Start by collecting some reference images. Open up PureRef on one side of your screen and Google Images on the other. Search for the object that you're looking to generate. To move an image onto your reference board, first click on it, then drag the larger version of the image onto the board. Continue collecting images with a variety of interesting shapes. These will help guide you when you're crafting your segments. Once you're finished, remember to save your reference board. Now it's time to decide what segments you'll be splitting your object into. Open up a typical reference image in your paint editor of choice. I used Krita. Add a new layer and bring its opacity down low. Switch to the polygon tool and set its fill to foreground colour and its outline to no outline. Then draw polygons over your image with a different colour for each segment. I also added labels to mine. Once you're done, remember to save your image. Now it's time to start modelling segments for your generator. Fire up Blender and delete the default cube. Create a collection for each type of segment. Each segment that you build will be in its own collection, nested inside its type collection, like this. Use Blender's modelling tools to create some segments, using your reference board as inspiration. Once it's finished, the generator will work by starting with one root segment and growing the object out of it by adding other segments on. So consider which segment you want to be your root. For my sword generator, I'll be using the grip as the root. Once a segment is placed, the generator will need to know what to place next and where to place it. Put an empty object in the segments collection. Position that empty object where you want the next segment to be placed. Add a custom property to that empty object and name it collection and set its type to string. Then set the value to the name of the segment that you want to go there. This empty is at the top of the grip, so I set the value to guard, so that when the generator places the grip, it'll add a guard above it. I also added one to the bottom of the grip with a value of pommel, and later, when I made the guards, I did the same, but with a value of blade. So when the generator is running, it'll start by placing a grip, then it'll see those empties, and know to add a guard and a pommel. Once it's added the guard, it'll see the guards empty, and it'll add a blade, and the sword will be finished. Continue creating segments like this until you have at least a few of each. The more you make, the more possible combinations there will be. You can always come back later and add extra segments, or adjust the ones you have. Now it's finally time to write the script that actually does the generating. First, we'll need some imports. We'll need BPY, Choice from Random, and Matrix from Math Utils. Then we'll add some constants. Initial collection name will be the name of your root segment. In this case, I'm using the grip as my root segment. Final collection name is the name of the collection we'll be putting all of the generated parts into. I called this sword since I'm generating swords. And connector property name is the name of the custom property that you added to the empties earlier. Now get the final collection based on the constant we just defined and store it in a variable. If it doesn't exist, then create it. Loop through all the objects inside the final collection and remove them. This will clear out the previously generated object so we aren't just generating another on top of it. Now create a list of tuples called connectors. The first entry in each tuple will be the name of the collection that we're choosing from, and the second entry will be where we want it to be placed. We'll use a matrix for this, so that it can hold the location, rotation, and scale. Initially, we only want to put one entry in there. The name will be the initial collection name that we defined earlier, and the place will be at the origin. We can get a transformation matrix for that by using matrix.identity. Now create a while loop that loops over the connectors until there are none left. We need a loop, even though there is only one entry, because we'll be adding more entries as we go. Each iteration, we'll unpack the connector into the collection and transform variables. Then we'll choose a random segment from the collection with the name that we got from the connector. We can add that segment by creating an empty, setting its instance type to collection and its instance collection to the chosen segment. We can position it correctly by setting its matrix world to the transform that we got from our connector. Now link it into the final collection. Now we just need to check if the segment we added had any additional connectors. We can check this by looping through all of the objects in the chosen segment and checking if those objects have the custom property that we added earlier. If an object has that property, then we know it's a connector. We'll need to get the transform of the connector relative to the instance we've placed. We can get that by combining the world matrices of both the instance we just created and the connector we found. Then we just add the collection name and the transform to the connectors list so that future iterations of the while loop can repeat the process with them. That's the script finished. Now every time we click run script, a new object will be generated. 
To finish it all off, I added a camera and set up my render settings. I also added some lights and adjusted them until I had a result I was happy with. If you have any questions, then feel free to post a comment. If you'd like to see the source blend file, you can find a link to it in the description. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching.